Ah, there you are. <coughs> me ducks and drakes. <laughs> me dogs and cats. How are you all? So good to see you. Geneva, Ireland. <sighs> Globetrot as you are. Citizens of the universe. <coughs> Welcome to the safe space of the Zen Den. Hey, OMG. Bit of calm, bit of tranquility. Nothing can touch us in the Zen Den. An hour or so of tranquil music. Bit of nonsense. Couple of fun things. We got Fakey in the house. We got Mark Cresol. We got Stuart Collingwood. Going to kick off with. Um, I guess it was the second piece that uh, me and Ernie wrote for Time Stand Still. It's called Lotus Flower. Inspiration was very much new life, new birth, the beauty of a flower emerging from the sludge and mud. Optimism. Uh, listen, <laughs> this is the one with Sally's rice bowl right at the beginning. I tried all kinds of Buddhist singing bowls and samples you know i bought but we whipped out her rice bowl it sounded the best <clears throat> lotus flower Lotus blossom, the lotus flower. <clears throat> Without mud, there's no lotus. Without suffering, there's no happiness. Without grit, there's no pearl. 
That's not me <laughs> saying those things. Although I believe them. Tick that Han again. Yeah. When you are born a lotus flower, be a beautiful lotus flower. Don't try and be a magnolia or a primrose. <laughs> I love all that stuff. I'm a sucker for it. <clears throat> oh, I saw the Aosagi the other day, the uh, grey heron. Just outside there. But there you go, that's the yin and yang again. The mud, the suffering. Because I think he was after Dennis's frogs. <sighs> but such a beautiful bird. Up to no good. Come to me, grey heron, I'll feed you. What can I feed you? I could give you the same as the chickens have. And then nobody gets harmed. <laughs> No frogs get harmed in the proceedings. That's the shakuhachi, of course. <coughs> I'll have some sacks on my phone now. <coughs> so we've got Sally's sack sock on again. Sax bandits in the house. Sax bandits, a wonderful uh, community of saxophone players all over the place, mostly down south. I went to um, have fun and frolics with 20 of them for a full day a couple of weeks ago. <sighs> Cost me about a thousand quid in petrol to get there. But it was, <laughs> it was worth it. Here's to you guys. <clears throat> Happy days. Hmm. <laughs> 
can't take that away from me. No, don't you try. Don't you steal my beer. <clears throat> we were talking a lot. I mean, I was actually, I was doing most of the talking with the sax bandits the other day. A lot about breathing, the air, the body. And halfway through that, I ran out of air. So I forgot to breathe. Because there's only me. That's the trouble when you play it unaccompanied. There's not those little bits where you can go, ah, oh, yeah, listen to the piano now for a bit and get some air in. But, you know, spaces are good. That's what I tell students as well. The gaps between the notes, they're just as important as the notes, but I didn't leave any. <laughs> if I'd left some gaps, I could have got some air in. Speaking of air, I am blowing fresh, pure Pennine air to you today, good people. Because me and Mrs. Snake conquered Pendle Hill this morning. Now, no cheeky comments about witches and Mrs. Snake, okay? I'm warning. <laughs> With our good friends Alex and Sally and Suzanne and Andrew, who you might think you don't know, but you kind of do, because... They are the parents and godparents of uh, Jakey, Fakey and Jakey, Jacob Smith, horn player and violinist extraordinaire who has on more than one occasion brightened up the stream with his uh, musical prowess. And uh, what a wonderful time it was. We were actually, oh, I know what I was going to do. <laughs> Just to prove it. How do I do this? Oh, yeah, yeah. There we are, look, at the top of Pendle Hill. Oh, didn't want it to end. There's, that's the other Sally. We're looking back down to, oh yeah, and there's, there's me in the, you can't miss me, I'm in the orange. <laughs> me and Mrs. Snake bringing up the rear. And you know I'm a sucker for moss, look at that. Oh, oh. Just wish I'd had a massive rucksack with me. No, I wouldn't steal. Would I steal moss from the Pennines? Probably not. Oh, look at that. Isn't that a delight? Isn't that a sight for sore eyes? You've got to love moss, haven't you? Have you? I love moss. <laughs> Favourite bit of my garden, the moss. Nope. You remember the tune, uh, Forget the Porridge? It's another one. I'm a glutton for punishment today. It's another one I play unaccompanied. Aka saxa, a cappella. And uh, it was at the old studio down south. And uh, the old days before I really got the broccoli porridge together. I used to have more normal porridge. Well, I used to have some sultanas in it sometimes and a bit of ginger but didn't have the full monty broccoli and turmeric and everything and uh, i used to make it in a different way so i used to put the porridge pan on and then go down to the studio which was down the garden as opposed to this one which is up the garden and uh you know do 15 minutes of long notes while the uh on the sax <laughs> while the porridge was tickling away on the hob but um this one time i got into into this tune because sometimes i'm not so disciplined i start my long notes and then i just start playing tunes and things and making stuff up and i was making this tune up and i forgot the porridge and the pan it was one of those double pans you know where you have the water and then put another pan in <laughs> i'm sure there's a name for it <laughs> anyway ow what's that oh Flipping thing again. Reflexology. <laughs> oh, kills. Oh, ow. <sighs> anyway, I forgot the, and it burnt the pan and burnt the porridge and, but it provided a title for the tune.
That'll do it. Forget the porridge. Forgot the porridge. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what the correct title is. I should know, shouldn't I? I wrote it. You know, you know I've tried so many things to keep me warm. Well, it's more to keep the saxes warm down here. So, has it been a particularly cold winter? I don't know. It feels like it to me. Anyway, I've got a patio heater up there. I forgot to turn it off. It was roasting my head. That didn't work, really work either because it, it roasts my head and doesn't really reach the sacks. So I have ideas about what I'm going to play on the stream. And I do all this preparation and then I change my mind. <clears throat> and I just remembered the Blade Runner theme. So moody, so beautiful. So Dick Morrissey, who was the guy who played it on the record. <clears throat> so I thought, that's what we need. We need the Blade Runner theme. The Blade Runner love theme. Vangelis, wasn't it? Vangelis, Vangelis. You say potato, I say Vangelis. I don't know how you pronounce it. <coughs> ah, so that was the tenor. This is the alto. A thing of beauty. <coughs> and here's the Blade Runner love theme. Thank you. 
Oh, I didn't want to stop. So beautiful. <clears throat> that's my favourite thing, really. I was making all crackling noises. Now. Can you hear it? That's the, uh, that's the patio heater <laughs> cooling off. It's got a cooling off period. That's my favourite thing, just floating over beautiful chords. With no particular attention to what the chords are. <laughs> just <laughs> trying to make nice sounds. The definition of music and the pursuit of a musician, really, isn't it? Trying to make nice sounds. <laughs> Spent my life doing just that. And Dick Morris here, I don't know if you're aware of him. A British tenor player, mainly, although that was a, an alto piece. There was the Morrissey Mullen Band. Dick Morrissey and Jim Mullen. Amazing guitar player. <clears throat> and, uh, Dick, not much older than me, really. <laughs> Oi, stop that. But he died too young. Like so many saxophone players. A lovely man. There was a plan for he and I to do a tour together and never happened because of his early demise. <clears throat> well, what a beautiful player. Seek him out on whatever means you have of seeking music. Great player. Thank you so much. For the, you know what? Every time I put my headphones in or look at this extra screen that I've got that Joe said we needed, I give thanks to you and your kindness and generosity because it was your donations that paid for all this stuff and uh, especially during lockdown kept us going and uh, <clears throat> really makes a difference keeps Joe in baked beans and the occasional beer and keeps the kit serviced and uh, yeah, I know a lot of you have been, <laughs> you've been here for all 183 shows or whatever it is early days I was on some old what they call those little square cameras that people wear on their helmets. <clears throat> GoPro. And uh, squinting at this little screen and uh, things were breaking down and it, you could only just see me in the murk. <laughs> now look at me, I'm all bright and colourful. And <laughs> Don't say it, you preferred it in the old days and you couldn't see me. <clears throat> but yeah, big thanks guys. Thanks for chipping in. You feel near.
the nearness of you. <clears throat> Time for a bit of whistle. The tin whistle. A simple, humble, but still gorgeous instrument. And who best to, to accompany the whistle but himself, Fakey. Where is he? <laughs> What an idiot he is. <coughs> I'm not supposed to agree. The whistle, I love my whistle. Oh. People often, you know, when you do gigs, people often say, um, who makes your mouthpieces? Who makes your whistle? But they've all either retired or died these days, so I can't, I can't offer any useful pointers. Somebody asked me the other day, I said, you can't get him anymore. So you don't make him anymore. I don't know what he's doing. But they're lovely instruments. Steve Harper. He used to live near me in Buckingham. Well, he probably still lives there, but I don't live there anymore. And he made walking sticks. I think he made guns as well. Can he make guns out of aluminium? Anyway. He made beautiful whistles, and he played great too. St. Thomas, written by Sonny Rollins. We'll get a proper musician on there. <clears throat> if 
fake it and go and put his feet up. Who makes my heating? <laughs> I don't know who makes that patio heater. Hang on a minute. Oh, I thought it, I thought it had the maker's name, but it says hot, do not touch. <laughs> I don't know. Right, what am I doing? Bit of sax and a bit of singing. Paul Simon song with my mate Mark. Where are you, my mate Mark? Yeah. Be sneaky. Yes, mate. <laughs>
Yes, Mr. Mark Creswell. <coughs> You're the man, the maestro. <coughs> Mark plays in the Alligator Shoes. Mark plays in the Snake Davis Trio with Johnny Thurkle. What an amazing musician. Me and him were at a music college together. In the uh, early 1900s, when dinosaurs roamed the earth of Headingley in Leeds. We got Igor in the house as well from Switzerland. A brother, fellow saxophone player. Good to see you, mate. Oh, we're so cosmopolitan tonight. Unbelievable. The Swampy Dog. <clears throat> oh, look down at my list. I've got a new one for us. A world premiere. <sighs> Everybody okay? Nobody hurt? <clears throat> I've been wanting to do this this song for a while. Um, do a sax cover of it. Son of a Preacher Man. Everybody knows that. Eh? Everybody knows it. It's written by John Hurley and uh, Ronnie Wilkins. And recorded by so many people, but the, the, I, th I think the first hit version was um, our own Dusty Springfield. And I played on one of her albums, but my memory, my memory is so vague, but it had one of the tunes was the, with the Pet Shop Boys, and it was that. It was, I think, it was used on a film with that Profumo guy. I can remember being in the recording studio. I think it did a whole album. I think it was offered. The song was offered to Aretha Franklin before Dusty, but she turned it down. I think she thought it was too close to home, too risque. After all, she was the daughter of a preacher man. But eventually she did do it, and that's a brilliant version too. It's just a great track. Brilliant writing, classic arrangement, originally produced by the Atlantic Records guys, um, Jerry Wexler and Arif Mardin. They probably produced Aretha's version as well. And they produced Average White Band. 
Anyway, I'll have a crack. It's work in progress. <clears throat> Look, I'm not doing my duty, I'm not using Sally's sack socks. Where are they? Just to explain, especially if the uh, bandits were on board, because my wreaths were going well wrinkly on that workshop. <clears throat> so, so this is a, basically, it's a soggy pouch that, that slips over the mouthpiece to try and keep the reed moist. <clears throat> Things you have to do. Billy Ray was a preacher's son. <clears throat> okay. Concentrate, Snakey. <laughs> Scandal, somebody said. Danny. The Reverend Danny. Lord of Bridlington. Right, right. <laughs> Thank you. 
Marvellous he is, Mr. Stu Collingwood, Stuart Collingwood, Stu Piano, you'll find him on social media. Beautiful. His solo piano music is brilliant as well. A great composer, great player, obviously. Good singer, too. Great singer. No, he's got it all. Hate him. No. He's a good boy. Ramsey Lewis, was it, wrote that? I don't know. Somebody will tell me. <clears throat> it was wonderful to see a flurry of Zen Denners down at the uh, Ropery last week. Out in real life. But this is real too. It's a different reality. Always great to see you guys. <clears throat> What's coming up? 
Just Glosburn, I think. I mean, just not just Glosburn. I mean, just one gig before I see you again. That's Glosburn on the Saturday night, which is... Uh, Well, it's west from here. I'm not sure where it is really. I've been there just once. It's near near Huddersfield, I think. That area, beyond Bradford from me. Anyway, I, just, I think there's just not many tickets left for that, but some. If I don't see you there, I'll see you there, back down here. Our safe space. A week today. I feel that we should have some Simon Goulding next week. And I don't know what else. Always open to suggestions. So a massive thanks today to, uh, to Stuart Collingwood, to Mark Creswell, Fakey, Old Fake Davis, Sally and Joe. Oh, last time we met, I, had, I was a flying solo, wasn't I, without the, the team? We got away with it. With their back. Thank goodness. So thank you guys. <laughs> I'm going to end with uh, the sound of silence. Been speaking about silence a bit, haven't we? Haven't I? <laughs> Not a bad thing at all, silence. I'll see you before we go. Well, I think it's worked. No wrinkly reads tonight. <coughs> so thank you, Sally, for that masterful design. This is kind of um, our version. When I say our, being me and Diane, my lovely student, our version of the darkness's version of Simon and Garfunkel's absolutely wonderful song, Sound of Silence. Thank you.
Oh, such a big song. Many thanks to Diane for encouraging both of us to work on that version of that beautiful song. And uh, you guys take good care. It's been, as always, a huge, huge, huge pleasure and honour to have your company this evening. See you next week. Spread the word. Bring your friends, bring your family. More pets. Pets are welcome. The last few weeks have been uh, tailing out over the end captions <laughs> with a piece called Granada. And that's a performance by Simon Goulding and solo bass guitar. <clears throat> and I, I think this is the only recording of that. It's, it's from a concert that we did, just the two of us in the, the Ropery Hall. Favourite venue. And, uh, yeah. Unreleased, I think. We'll release it one day. I hope. Take good care, be kind to each other. Breathe deep in times of adversity and anxiety and worry. Just got to do our best, haven't we? Look after each other. Lots of love. See you soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.